Hi. Welcome to today's topic on prisms and its uses in ophthalmology. Introduction. When viewed through a prism, the position of object would appear to be changed. When a white light is incident on a prism, it appears to be dispersed into color spectrum when emergent from second surface. Dispersion is usually seen in thick prisms whose apical angle is greater than 15 to 20 degrees. Ophthalmic prisms are generally thin prisms whose apical angle is less than 10 to 15 degrees. Prism Basics A prism is usually represented diagrammatically as a principal section of the solid from which it is produced. The prism base, the two sides that are inclined to form the prism apex. The angle subtended by the apex is denoted as the apical angle, A. The base of all prisms are thicker than the apex. The orientation of the prism in front of the eye will affect the position at which the eye perceives any object to be when viewed through the prism. It is therefore important to specify accurately the orientation of the prism so that its effect on the eyes is known when incorporated into a refractive correction. The orientation of a prism is specified in terms of direction of its base. Effect of prisms To the observer, viewing an object through an ophthalmic prism, the prism's effect is to move the objects to apparent position to O. In fact, the object is still positioned at O. The object's appearance would be otherwise unchanged. As the prism has no effect on virgins, we have seen that an object viewed through a prism will get displaced towards the prism apex. The diagram shown here indicates the displacement of cross hairs when viewed through three separate prisms of equal power. Prism 1 shows the base of a prism lens that is placed parallel to the horizontal line of the cross hair. It is positioned in such a way that an imaginary line bisects the apical angle and that is perpendicular to the base is parallel to the apex. In this position, the prismatic effect is only seen to affect the horizontal cross. The deviation moves the apparent position of the horizontal cross hair towards the apex of the prism. Similarly, in prism 2, the base apex bisector of the apical angle is placed parallel to the vertical cross hair. And the prismatic effect changes only the apparent position of the vertical cross hair and it is deviated towards the apex of the prism. In prism 3, the prism has been positioned such that the base apex bisector of the apical angle is at an angle of 45 degrees to the horizontal cross hair. In this position, the prismatic effect will deviate both the horizontal and vertical cross hairs towards the apex of the prism. Units of prism power The apical angle and the refractive index of the prism determine its deviating power. Deviation produced can be given in angular units, prism diopters, centrons, relieving and exercising prisms. In relieving prism, the object will move towards the deviated eye position. And in exercising prism, the deviated eye will shift towards the normal position for locating an object. In relieving prism, the prism apex should be towards the deviation. And in exercising prism, it is directed opposite to that of the deviation. Ocular effects of prisms The prism orientation in front of each eye is indicated by its base direction. Base out is denoted when the base is positioned on the temporal side. When a base out prism is positioned in front of each eye, each prism will have their base orientated at the temples of each eye and the apices of the prisms will be pointing towards the nose. Similarly, base in prism 
is denoted when the base of the prism is orientated towards the nasal side of the eye and the apex towards the temple. Clinical Considerations Due to prismatic effect in the contralateral eye, even when it is incorporated only in one eye, the spectacles may be dispensed, with the prism power split between the two eyes. It is important that the effect on the eyes as a pair is maintained when the prism power is split between the spectacle lenses. This can be achieved using the following rules. Prism power with horizontal base direction should have the same base direction in both eyes. Prism power with a vertical direction should have opposite base directions in each eye, with the base direction for the eye in which the prism was originally prescribed remaining the same. Prismatic effects of spectacle lenses It is apparent, looking at these positive and negative powered lenses that the spherical lens shape could be made up of an infinite number of small prismatic components. The prismatic effect increases with increasing distance from the optic axis towards the edge of the lenses. Consequently, prismatic effects can occur when the direction of gaze is taken away from the optic axis or if the lens is not aligned such that the optic axis corresponds with the line of sight. If the lenses are of the same power, and the centers of the lenses correspond with the pupillary positions, then directing gaze away from the optic center of the lens will have zero net effect. It is the difference between eyes that becomes the principal issue. The positioning of the lens away from the line of sight is termed as Decentration This slide explains the property of positive and negative lens. They are combination of prisms, positive lens, base attached, negative lens, apex attached. The convergent property of the positive lens could be explained by placing the lens between the object and the eye. As the light rays bends towards the base, the rays converge. Base to base the divergent property of the negative lens could be explained by placing the lens between the object and the eye. As the light rays bends towards the base, the rays diverge. Prentice Rule Decenting the optical center of a lens can induce the prismatic effect in a spectacle lens and the amount of decentration for spherical lenses can be calculated using Prentice Rule. It is given by the formula P is equal to CF, where P is the prismatic power. C is the distance from the pole in centimeter. F is the lens power. Let us see the following examples of calculating prism power based on decentration. In first case, we have 3 mm decentration below the optic center of a plus 3 spherical lens. So the prism induced based on the formula is 0.9 prism base down. In second case, we have 5 mm decentration temporal to optic center of plus 5 spherical lens. So the prism induced calculated based on Prentice formula gives us the answer. 1.5 prism base out. Let us see some more examples and how to determine the prism direction. If we are required to find the prismatic effect of a plus 5 spherical lens at a point 4 mm below the optical center, based on Prentice rule, P is equal to CF gives 0.4 x5 is equal to 2 prism base down. A diagram similar to A in the slide where the plus lens is represented as to prisms base to base can assist in determining the direction down in this case. Suppose we now wish to calculate the
the prismatic effect at a point 4 mm below the optical center of a minus 4 spherical lens. Then P is equal to CF is equal to 0.4 x4 gives us 1.6 prism base up. A diagram, similar to, B, in the slide, where the minus lens is represented as to prism's apex to apex, can assist in determining the direction, up in this case. Calculation of the prismatic effect for spherocylinder lenses is the same, if the prismatic effect is required in a principal meridian. Let us see the clinical applications of prism. Prisms are used is for diagnostic purposes. Prisms are used in keratometers, applination tonometers, gonioscopes, and ophthalmoscopes. Prisms can be used in treating phorias like convergence insufficiency and divergence insufficiency. Exophoria is seen in convergence insufficiency and is treated with basin prisms. Esophoria is seen in divergence insufficiency and is treated with base out prisms. Phorias can be treated up to 10 prism diopter. Beyond that, surgical correction is indicated. Prisms are used in measurement of tropias and for assessing the primary and secondary deviation. In incomitant strabismus, prisms are used to correct the head posture and reduce diplopia in primary gaze. Sometimes, patients with anisometropia experience double vision while reading if they look off-center because of the prismatic effect of the different lenses. This can be reduced by using vertical prisms known as slab-off prisms. When a prism is prescribed, the amount and direction should be mentioned. A 4 prism diopter hypertropia in the right eye should be prescribed as 4 prism diopter base down in right eye or divided between the two eyes to prism base down in right eye and to prism base up in left eye. Prisms can also be used in patients with homonymous hemianopia to bring the images from the area of visual field defect to the area where vision is intact. Thanks for watching. For more optometry related videos, subscribe the channel. Thank you.